This feels like the end of Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. Where and, you get to the end of a really good movie and go, and, oh, they're, they're, they're running off into the woods. Well, see, that, that's and, funny because to me, I, I mean, with them kind of going off into the sunset, I, I felt like it was, you know, it, it ended right there. Like, they could not make another one. I'm like, okay, well, that was the end of the story for now until some other director Well, there was along. no real winner at the end. I mean, they, 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 they did blow up what they were sent well, to blow up. Not, you know, I'm not, yeah, I mean, everybody this, knows. This movie's that hard to talk about because it's well, got some, so many great things in it that come near the end. It's like, damn it, I don't want to spoil this for anybody. The best but, stuff yeah. is towards the end. Yeah. The well, big surprises. Watching the movie, when I was watching, I was like, what could they have done to actually, and this is in the middle of the movie. I'm like, what? because I'm thinking, this is, what direction is this going in? And I'm thinking, well, they should have made a stronger story out of the robots taking humans and experimenting on them. And you have this urgency to save like this one last group of humans who has this really uh, uh, you have uh, Carl Reese in there, which you really have to save. And, it's, and if they had put more urgency on that and l- that was the goal, let's save this group of humans who are going to be tested on for the for the skin, for the cyborgs. I felt that. That would have made a stronger contained movie. Or what you said about sending Kyle Reese back. That was a good idea, yeah. too. And ultimately, the, 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 I think part of the problem with the first two thirds is it kind of meanders around because it wants us to get to know Marcus, who is admittedly an interesting character and a pretty cool idea in the context of this you know, sci-fi genre in the world of Terminator. We haven't seen anything like this character before. But then by the end, you kind of feel like, well, why did we spend all that time? You know, why did we even go there? I'm not even sure. I want to know more about John Connor and Kyle Reese in the future. And and, say, and this is where I disagree with you, Corey, about McGee's directing on, on Christian Bale. As intense as Christian Bale is, he's always believable, but he had one speed throughout the whole thing. Yeah. It was all grim and gruff with everything. And he shouted every line. Yeah, and we just <laughs> didn't really get to know him as a person, so it was hard to root but for But see, him. you and I agree on that. Are you telling me that Batman has a problem <laughs> with his voice? I was starting to think that maybe all the fun we had with him in, in, in Batman, in The Dark Knight, it's like maybe the brother's got throat cancer or something. No, <laughs> no, no. Christ. No, 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 and see, I, I just watched, I rewatched The Dark Knight again yesterday, <laughs> and he, he perfectly plays it off Dark Knight and then Bruce Wayne. Completely different yeah. characters with you know lots of modulation, and you get to know Bruce Wayne where you like you actually like Bruce Wayne so much you well, like you want that guy to succeed. It was a joke. Well, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> hey, 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 man, whoa, 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 whoa. talking about Batman. Okay. And there's no joking when it comes to Batman. Two fucking rules: no fucking Transformer jokes and no fucking Batman. Jokes, I never okay? signed either one of those contracts. Yeah, neither else, did I. Or else we're gonna go all fucking. Psycho bingo crazy on your fucking little lolcat. Pretty much, there. yeah. I tell you what. Oh yeah, because you've never done that before. <laughs> I has old jokes. <laughs> hey, an oldie but a goodie. Call out for the win. <laughs> hey, my 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 website that I like didn't cost like 160 million dollars. So, well, just saying. Website well, you like? Hey. What the hell are you talking about? So you really Black just have no idea, do you? <laughs> well, God forbid they ever make a bat bot because we can't touch that shit at all. We're gonna be double teen right here. Uh, no, we, you and I will. Oh dear Christ! Uh, I know. I don't want to picture that. <laughs> but uh, no, you and I agree more on than what you think. I think Christian Bell is a good actor. I think that he delivered those, those lines. I thought that he had were kind of a lot of them weren't that good. He's he's given one of the worst lines in the movie. I think that he's good. I think that you're right. He's one note, and that lends to what I'm saying that he does not seem like somebody who is this legend that we've come right. to like expect yeah. great things from. And God, but Michael actually, Ironside has given the worst lines in the entire movie. And no, I no. know he can act. Oh, no, but, Michael Ironside can't act. That's why we love him. No, but he can act the way we. The, in a role like this, like he's cast act, but, like this but, sort of hard ass jerk off. Yes, he'd be good at that. But the dialogue they give him, no one could have read that convincingly. It's and just like, I, all right, I, man. Bryce Dallas Howard, to, kind of a waste in this movie. Yeah, Could've I don't even anybody. know why she was there. No, she, why she's there is because she's set up for the next movie. Yeah, she's fair. carrying John Connor's baby. Right. But um, no, I have to. I really have to disagree with you with that whole concept of John. Fuck Connor. you. <laughs> that whole concept of fuck your thoughts. That's what it was. That's right. No. No, I, what I actually dug about this, well, this is, again, one of those things that you hate it for this, I like it for this, but I like the fact that he wasn't living up to some legend, that he was trying constantly to live up to a legend that people around him didn't want him to live up to. And I like this whole concept of, of him being a man that means more as a symbol than he actually does as a real super badass. Much like Batman. Just, just want to throw that in there. Well, maybe I just, yeah. why wouldn't you throw Batman? Yeah, in so, there? of course. Yeah, I don't Our know. Listeners aren't drunk enough yet, so <laughs> maybe Batman, I just Batman, didn't. Batman, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I just didn't get him because uh, I couldn't see that resistance doing a damn thing with him getting on the radio every time, not being able to understand what he's saying. Every time he got on the, 
on the on the on the uh, transistors like this is John Connor. This is the Jimmy. And people think it to their heads like, is it Batman, Sylvester Stallone? What the fuck are we talking to? What did he say? John Connor is the Rush Limbaugh of the future. <laughs> and so, by the time people try to decipher what he said, robots be in the room already. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> he's Rush Limbaugh's dream future where he's the only guy on the radio. That's right. <laughs> they should put John but, Connor on the microphone and let him like short circuit the robots. He could all, <laughs> robots like, this, is, this is why John Connor was so fucking successful when there's nothing else on the radio. What else the fuck you gonna listen Hell to? Yeah. But that crazy Batman. And it's guy. funny though. There was this point because they kept doing that with him on the radio, and I expected him at one point. He kind of like actually mellowed out to a dance. I expected him go, and now the mellow sounds of the Doobie Brothers lead us into our next caught in the quiet storm. Oh yeah, we're yeah. gonna play a little Smokey Robinson for you. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny if nobody took him seriously. Everybody's like, oh wait, my, fa- my favorite show is coming on. It's, it's, oh. that, it's that crazy resistance guy. He's a guy with me. Come to guys with me. And everybody just oh. laughing. No, I'm serious, people. Let me come in. Wait till he gets to his catchphrase. <laughs> well, that's true. He would be like the Alex Jones more of the future. Where he's just shouting a bunch of paranoid shit. He's like, oh, this guy and his robots. <laughs> and it's my favorite show. He's and, the only- and until next time. I'll be back. He's the only guy, too. You know he'd be doing stuff like singing on there and stuff. Right. <laughs> You're like, I just wrote this song. I had some spare time last night while I was thinking about how my mom was killed by robots. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> holy shit. I said it. It all makes sense now. That's why Skynet went back into the past to kill his fucking mother. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to hear this shit. To the show. <laughs> They're like, we got to kill this motherfucker. We can't. Can we go back in time and kill his mom's? Yeah, yes. They, yeah, the robots are like, why are you trying to save this motherfucker, man? We hate this you show. I have no idea what future he will bring. <laughs> oh, okay. Ky- so clearly- Kyle Reese is like his, his Jason F. It's his one fanboy. <laughs> what are you saying? Like, like the Resistance doesn't have time travel yet. All they got is that, that tape recording from the, the past. But wouldn't you like, of all the possibilities, wouldn't you be like, man, my mom was really crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think that more than anything else? Like, yeah, what? Yeah, she was kind of not all there. Yeah, this was a bitch talking about. Man, cut that off. You don't listen to that for three days. That's why you get on the radio every day. I'm like, because you're driving you crazy. Uh, and look, everybody talks about plot holes in this movie. I mean, listen, all these movies have dumb things in them, have bad dialogue, and they have bad, uh, the really huge gaping plot holes. I mean, come on. It's like if you want to keep Kyle Reese from going back and getting Sarah Connor pregnant, just have one of those robots come and kick his ass in the nuts a few times and send his ass, you know, like give him a, like a, a robot vasectomy or some shit. I mean, uh, uh, like make sure somebody goes back to be like uh, Sarah Connor's boyfriend who's better looking than Kyle Reese and that dude can't have babies. I mean, it is one of those things where it's like, look, if, if the ultimate plan of the robots was to kill Kyle Reese so he couldn't go back into the past, they had ample chances to do that without their convoluted plan. However, it is said convoluted plan that gets us through a cool ass movie. Yeah. So I yeah. I say let him do it. No, I I agree with that. I mean, anybody remember the thumbs up at the end of Terminator Two? I mean, come on, Hasta la Vista, baby. Oh, that all. was a horrible moment to be sure. Oh yeah, all these movies got horrible shit in them. In fact, I would think I think that this movie is probably the most serious out of all of them. I, I almost say it's too serious, and that, and that's probably my my biggest problem with it. Yeah, yeah. But you know something? I mean, there's certain things where you're right. It is too serious, and there's certain things where it's like, I, I kind of appreciate where they pull back on some things. I mean, you have these huge explosions going on, these huge robots coming in. But one of the smart things that Mac G did was that he didn't blast the music every time that happened. Right. Mac G? Mac G. Mac G. <laughs> Mac G. <laughs> That's one of the robots in the movie, Mac G. <laughs> you know, the one thing that has me really excited watching this, officially, we can actually say the post-apocalyptic film is back. Uh, this is the start of several other post-apocalyptic films we'll be seeing here shortly. Uh, you know, we've got The Road coming out later this year. The Warner Brothers Warner Brothers greenlit a sequel to this as soon as they saw McGee's rough cut. And then, of course, they, they may be greenlighting uh, Mad Max 4, Thunder Road, yeah. here very shortly. So we're about to see a whole series of great, or at least hopefully great, <laughs> is, is that where, where Max films. discovered a, a, a pocket of, of Jews who, who have survived the, oh, the apocalypse? <laughs> at this point... Take them out at this point in the future there's a shortage of adult wait, diapers wait uh, <laughs> have you not have you not seen the movies with
with all the guys who are trying to corner the market on gas. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I was, I was about to say, Nigo said, I'm just saying. You have to go back in time to see that shit come uh, around. See, but then we're going to have a movie where, where Mel Gibson keeps turning the camera going, ah, ah, wink, wink. <laughs> and you know something? Sound familiar? I mean, and you're right. I mean, I love the way uh, these post-nuclear war movies look because I love the destroyed landscape. And they give you this in here. I mean, in the trailers, we see them just like hanging out in the desert. And we think, like, well, y'all go out to Nevada and shoot this shit. And then, but, but then here they go into the cities, and the cities look badass. Oh man, yeah, and and the and the Terminators. I mean, this fuck Arnold Schwarzenegger. I like the Terminators when they look like big skeletons walking around, and they look scary in well, some shit, scenes. Shit, man, when they they come across that one that's thirty stories tall, I was just like, if I was one of those guys, I would lay my gun down and be like, fuck We're this, fuck. I'm, I'm <laughs> over. Yeah. You're not gonna fight. At I know. All. What's the point? I'm, I'm just strapped real. I'm, I'm gonna strap my gun real quick. Here you go, son. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I get a can of WD-40. I'm going to be spit shining. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you got a little bit right there. <laughs> yo, 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 Mr. Terminator, sir. There's, there's some hiding back over behind that tree right there. Oh, my yeah. God. Is that John Connor? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. John Connor can give it up real quick. <laughs> Come on, man. Shit, I'll suck your dick. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, We're hey. sucking robot cock. People. Yes, this is the I love it. I like that'd be the first thing you'd go to. The robot be like, "We don't even. We're gonna even ask you for that." <laughs> well, can, can I do it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Will it buy me some time? <laughs> I tell you what John Connor is. You can do anything you want to me, but uh, no. Nah, what do you I, give this, Corey? You know, <laughs> you're talking to a guy that has sex with a vacuum cleaner, yeah, by the way. Trying to, <laughs> trying to pull it back, trying to get away from the sun. Can't you see me? Like it's not even a Terminator I'm talking to. It's a vacuum cleaner. Hey, I'll have sex with you. I'm looking around and shit. You say but, that as if it hasn't happened. No, I said it did happen. I, I admitted <laughs> I, that when I was. When I, I think I, we've replaced the Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know what? Uh, like I said, I can point out dumb shit in all these movies. I think this movie, despite its weak points, and there are some major weak points, it delivered on what we were looking for. It gave True. us more robots, gave us some really great action scenes, gave us that post-apocalyptic war we were looking for, and it convinced me that Mac G is a good director. I'm going to give it full price. You know, it's funny. Just uh, while I have a hard time arguing with you about a lot of that, when you said earlier, Leon, it's missing a heart. I think that really hurt it more than than y'all seem willing to acknowledge. I just felt like even though the effects were fantastic and a lot of the action scenes kicked ass, at points it just seemed that even with that, it was just kind of going through the motions in a clinical, technical sort of fashion. And it wasn't till the very end that it started to win me back over. Uh, I got to go with a low matinee on this one. Really? Low yeah, matinee. I just, I like, while I watched it, I was never like, oh, I'm bored or anything. Neither was I really all that excited either. It's it's weird because I, I feel like all of us are, are saying the same things and yet we just feel it to different degrees. Like what you just said, what Corey just said. I, I Yeah, I, I would say yes, 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 yes. I, except that like I wasn't bored. Uh, I did like it. But like that last, the last third, that last 20, 30 minutes. I thought just really majorly kicked ass. And if you got to have a great beginning or a great ending, I go with the great ending. So it left me feeling charged up at the end of it. And I know if there's such a thing, I give it a low full price. (laughs) No no such fucking thing as that. (laughs) Wait a minute. But low matinee? If if there there can be a high matinee, it can be a low full price. See, I got to go with my man Leon because I like this movie a lot. But it didn't leave me complete at the end. It's definitely no Star Trek, and I think that's going to hurt it. Coming mm-hmm. on the heels yeah, of Star Trek, true. people are going to walk out of that going, well, you know, the other movie was kind of better. But it's it's good. The action scenes are great. It's a lot of fun. If you see it, you got to see it on the big screen because that's how it was made to be seen with great sound. It's a full price movie, but it's not a super enthusiastic, oh, my God, you have to see this movie now. It's it's really good movie. It's not perfect. See, I thought you said, can I give it a matinee full price or something like that? I no, thought no, you no. did a hybrid. What'd you say? I, I got. Said, I said a low full price. Oh, like, yes. Like, like, like Carlisle saying, it's like it's yeah, it's not Star Trek. It's not a oh my god, you got to see this. But if you pay full price, you won't feel ripped off. And yeah. I agree with you both completely because it is a very grim movie in a way. It just what? doesn't leave you excited. It doesn't leave you cheering. Like that's what I, that's what my problem so, with it was. The three of us. Against the last vestiges of humanity. <laughs> I'm the last vestiges of humanity. I'm so touched. I know we want to end this, but can I bring up something that I that I really was curious about? All right. It's like every Terminator is a huge bulking man. Don't you, you are you saying this movie is sexist? The Cyberdyne systems I, is sexist? I'm just I'm thinking they could probably win better if they had like 
Hot more female Terminator robots with big tits and oh, big old ass. Here's did, the, did, did you what, miss Terminator did you, 3? Did you notice nobody seemed to be fucking in the future? I think they got all of your people. <laughs> By people, I mean all the people like Corey with those original sex bots, and then they didn't buy the sex bots. I don't bots. think so. I think the robot... She's would... coming on to me pretty strong, dude. Exactly. I think she's a sex bot. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> I know. Clamp! If you're listening to this, you are the resistance.